I'm Keisha from Siouxland Libraries and this is The Book Report. In today's book report we'll be talking all about new indigenous books that have just come out. We have books that talk about different native cultures from all over the U.S. and Canada. Let's dive in and explore the differences and similarities facing these kids in these books. First up is a new picture book called It's a Matig. What's a Matig, you ask? Well, it's a chi in Ojibwa. In this book by Bridget George, we learn different nature words in Ojibwa. Written in a rhyming combination of English and Ojibwa, we learn a gog is a porcupine and an ashigan is a fish. This fun picture book has everyone using new words. There's a glossary in the back of the book to help you say the words, but I would recommend visiting the author's website and hear her say the words. For the beginning chapter book readers, I have Jojo McCoons by Don Quigley. The first book in the series is called The Used to Be Best Friend. Jojo lives in a fictional Native American Ojibwa reservation called the Pimbin Ojibwa Reservation. Even though Jojo's reservation is made up, it has a lot of things that are similar to the Ojibwa and other Native American communities. Jojo loves her number one best friend, Mim the cat, but is worried that she's got to get her first vaccinations. She's also worried about her school best friend may not want to be friends anymore. Jojo needs to figure out how to make more friends. You will fall in love with Jojo's spunkiness and at times silliness. I can't wait for the second one. In our next book, we move to the Navajo Nation and Brian Young's Healer of the Water Monster. Nathan is an 11 year old living in Phoenix, Arizona, but will be spending the summer with his grandma in the Navajo Reservation in New Mexico. His grandma's mobile home doesn't have running water or electricity. Nathan isn't looking forward to no cell reception, but it's better than spending the summer with his dad and his new girlfriend. Anyway, Nathan's looking forward to having a quiet summer with his grandma and Uncle Jute, working on a science fair project. Instead, he finds himself on an adventure of a lifetime when he discovers that something is eating his heirloom seeds for his project. While wandering the desert, Nathan encounters a pond, an ailing water monster. He ends up on a quest and enter the third world and has to save not only the water monster, but his uncle Jet. Read Healer of the Water Monster and get swept into this heartfelt story of family and healing based on Navajo teachings. Our next book brings us to Canada in The Case of the Windy Lake by Michael Hutchinson. It's the first book in the series called The Mighty Muscat Mystery. The Mighty Muscats are four cousins growing up on the Windy Lake First Nation in Canada. Sam, Otter, Atom, and Chickadee get their nickname because they wrestle, play, argue, and laugh like a family of muskrats. Each new adventure the mighty muskrats find themselves in adds to their reputation. When an archaeologist hired by the mining company goes missing near the lake, they are determined to find him. In the midst of community conflict, family concerns, and environmental protest, the mighty muskrats get busy following every lead. If you like the books like Hardy Boys and Nancy Drew, you'll want to pick this book up and enjoy. Ancestry Approved Intertribal Stories for Kids is the last book I'm going to talk about. Ancestry Approved has 16 short stories and two poems in it. The book was edited by Cynthia Leach Smith. She's the one that put all the stories in the book together and also has a story in the book. The stories are all about native families from different nations gathering for a dance of Mother Earth powwow for two days in Amara, Michigan. Throughout the stories, we learn about what a powwow is and how important it is to enable tribes all over the U.S. and Canada. Each story highlights their journey taken to get to the powwow and the journey the kids have throughout the festival. Let me read you a little bit of one of the poems. 
This poem is by Kim Rogers and it's called, What is a Powwow? A powwow is a place to show our resilience and strength. We are still here, generations after generations, into the future and beyond. A powwow is drums, songs, and dancing in jingle, feathers, shawls, and beaded buckskins, regalia, you and your family made with love. A powwow is eating fried bread and corn soup together, selling and buying artwork, jewelry, and t-shirts that everyone would be proud to wear. A powwow is prizes and recognition, but community is the best prize of all. A powwow is a place for belly laughs late into the sleepy night with your Grandpa Lou, then getting home after midnight. A powwow is where the heart beats as one as the, to the thumping of the drum together so strong, we belong. To read more stories like this one I showed you today, check out the Siouxland Library website. See you next time.